So I was looking at Twitter on the weekend, which I do too much, and I saw this tweet on the CBC. It has since been deleted, but someone took a screenshot of it. The CBC headline on the Twitter is, video shows youth standing extremely close to elderly man while others laugh. And as you can see at the bottom there, you can see the actual headline of the story is U.S. Diocese investigating after students mock indigenous demonstrator, CBC News. Now, my first reaction to this is, why is Trudeau's CBC state broadcaster that we're all forced to spend $1.5 billion a year on in tax money in Canada, why is it covering a weird U.S. story like this? I mean, how about covering Canadian news? My second reaction, probably even before I read the words itself, was, ha, huh, obviously this is an attack on Donald Trump, since you'll notice that kid was wearing one of Donald Trump's iconic red hats with his slogan, Make America Great Again. That hat drives the left crazy. It identifies enemies to them to hate. So I guess that answered my first question, why are Trudeau's government journalists reporting on this? Because they hate Donald Trump and his supporters, and they thought they caught one doing something bad. But my third thought was, what exactly is the story here? I mean, look at that tweet again. Is the problem that he was standing extremely close to someone? Close standing? I've heard of man spreading. That's when men sit with their knees a bit apart on the subway. I've heard of close talking. That was a joke on Seinfeld. We all know a close talker, don't we? He's nice, bit of a close talker. A what? You'll see. <laughs> This is Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello. Hello, Aaron. So how long are you folks in town? Oh. <laughs> Three more days. Three more days, and then we're off to Paris. It's <laughs> a close talker. <laughs> but this kid in the news was a close stander, which is obviously so much worse. Folks, he was standing, what was the word? Extremely close to an elder mini man. So he was an extremist. He was extremely, but he, but he wasn't saying anything, actually. He was just standing and, and smiling, not saying a word, not moving a muscle. But apparently other people around him laughed, and, and you know how laughing can be. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! It can be that way and worse, people. Now, the CBC put this on their national news all weekend, I should tell you. They said that teenager was mocking this elder in a racist way. Now, the CBC wasn't alone. In fact, that's part of the problem here. Our Canadian media party so desperately wants to be accepted by the cool kids in the U.S., so it's always trying to keep up with their latest anti-Trump fashion down there, which is why the CBC is covering some teenager from Kentucky smiling so mockingly in Washington, D.C. at a man from Michigan, actually. But, but they would just try to keep up with the Trump derangement syndrome patient zero, namely CNN. Here's CNN. They said, Video shows a crowd of teenagers wearing Make America Great Again hats taunting a Native American elder after Friday's Indigenous Peoples March at the Lincoln Memorial. Again, they were taunting. Well, that's no good. It's not good to taunt. Here, here's um, expert Alyssa Milano. I'm kidding. I think she's an actress. She wrote, The man that boy is harassing in the video is Nathan. And he's a veteran. Wow. Um, so that kid, uh, the evil smiler and close stander, his name is Nick Sandman, by the way. And he was harassing Nathan. Um, now, maybe we just didn't see the video of the harassment. We all saw that still photo. But Alyssa Milano said there was harassment. And CNN said there was taunting. CBC said there was just close standing. Um, but Alyssa Milano says it was taunting. Now, I think she lives in Hollywood, but she just sort of knew in her bones. And after all, the elder himself said so. Listen to this. Now, be warned, there's a bit of crying here. Take a listen. Generations, you know, when I was there, is singing, and I heard, I heard them saying, build that wall, build that wall. You know, this is indigenous land. Build that wall, build that wall. So that was the taunt. 
it, it, according to Melissa, uh, Alyssa Milano. Now, that is a weird taunt to say to a native Indian of all people, but you heard it, he was taunted, and he just told you what he was taunted by. And the Washington Post, which is owned by Jeff Bezos of Amazon, so you can trust him. I mean, sure, his wife can't trust him, his, his employees can't trust him, but we can trust him because he doesn't have an uh, agenda. Anyway, so what does Jeff Bezos' Washington Post have to say about this? Unlike Alyssa Milano, they actually are based in Washington, so maybe they know. Here's what they wrote. Um, it was getting ugly. I mean, the, the headline says it all, doesn't it? I'll read a little bit from the story. Surrounding him are a throng of young, mostly white, gross, teenage boys, several wearing Make America Great Again caps. Okay, we all know that, but here's the good stuff. One stood about a foot from the drummer's face wearing a relentless smirk. I got to tell you, people, smirks are awful, but when they are relentless, that is the worst. Okay, let me quote some more from the Bezos Washington Post. In an interview Saturday, Phillips, that's the elder, 64, said he felt threatened by the teens and that they swarmed around him as he and other activists were wrapping up the march and preparing to leave. Well, that is bad. Being swarmed by young men, that is awful. And he felt threatened. I bet he did. I mean, he was being swarmed. Let me quote a little bit more. It was getting ugly. And I was thinking, I've got to find myself an exit out of this situation and finish my song at the Lincoln Memorial, Phillips recalled. I started going that way, and that guy in the hat stood in my way, and we were at an impasse. He just blocked my way and wouldn't allow me to retreat. Yikes. So you heard him. He tried to leave, tried to retreat, but that smirker, that relentless smirker blocked him. That relentless smirker. Um, Nick is the name of the smirker. Nathan Phillips is the elder who was smirked at. So Nick was blocking him. Okay, well, it's settled. I mean, and what's worse, as you heard, uh, these kids were white. Gross. And the Washington Post said they're Catholic, too. Double gross from a Catholic school. And worse yet, triple gross. They were in town for the giant March for Life. There's more than 100,000 people at the March for Life this year. This is a uh, time-lapse film of them. That's a pro-life march. That is a lot of people. Uh, by contrast, there were fewer than 10,000 people at this year's Feminist Women's March. Funny, you'd think it was the other way around, given how much coverage each of the protests got. But what a great way for the media to end that weekend. It let them avoid talking about the March for Life. Instead, they were talking about the Indigenous March or something. It let them repudiate the morality of the March for Life. I mean, yuck, racist taunters. And it let the media switch the subject from their own conduct. They had been salivating all week over a story on BuzzFeed that claimed uh, they had seen documentary proof leaked to them by Robert Mueller's special counsel team that Donald Trump asked his lawyer, Michael Cohen, to lie to Congress. That would have impeached him right there. So the media ran so hard with that scoop, but it was all made up, and Mueller's own office made a rare public statement saying it was all made up after they had all repeated it. So this relentless smirker, extreme close stander story was the perfect end for a bad week for the liberal media I have to change the channel. Uh, here's a New York Times contributor uh, calling the kids Nazi youth. Uh, she deleted this tweet, but not before it was photographed, as you can see. Uh, here's Reza Aslan, a regular CNN contributor, uh, Muslim activist, saying the kid really has a punchable face. So wink, wink, you know what to do, people. Punchable face. Here's Kathy Griffin, the ex-comedian, calling for people to dox these kids. That means to research all their personal details and publish them online, their address, phone number, parents' information, siblings, what their parents, where they work. Uh, that's against Twitter's rules, by the way, but hey, that kid was obviously a Trump supporter, so an exception can be made. Uh, that tweet was not taken down, it's still up. Uh, except, is that how it all really went down? I mean, look at that weird language again at the CBC. Standing extremely close. That really is a weird headline. Now, it was close. 
uh, about as close as a close talker gets. But the kid in question, Nick Sandman, that's his name, he's a teenager, he just stood still. He didn't say a word. I don't think he scowled, I think he tried to smile. Or smirked relentlessly, if uh, you believe the Washington Post. The guy who was standing extremely close well, it was actually that elder, Nathan Phillips, with the drum. I want to show you a four-minute video. Now, I'm going to speed it up in the middle so you don't have to watch all four minutes. But I'm going to play the first part and the last part in real time. Uh, this is Phillips. He went right up to Nick Sandman. So close that the boy could surely feel uh, Nathan Phillips' breath on his face. And I've watched this video carefully. Uh, Phillips, the Indian activist, actually touches the boy several times with his drum, uh, he's pushing up against him. So who was standing extremely close to whom? The boy was just standing there. Here, watch the first full minute, okay? Here's the minute. can see the other boys were jumping around a little bit, hooting a bit, hey, oh, I don't know, because they're teenage boys, and there's this drummer guy, and they're just standing around, and they don't really know what to do or say, um, so they're, hey, oh, uh, was that taunting? Was that abuse? Was that, was that racism? Everyone seemed to be in good spirits. Here, I'm going to play the next part, uh, speed it up. Just so you can see that it was that same thing for minutes and minutes and minutes straight. Just an old man banging a drum right in a teenager's face, touching him, invading his personal space, and the kid was just smiling. Okay, watch this sped up. <laughs> Now, um, it just went on like that, and you could see it was the same as what I showed you before. And then someone chimed in. Now, it was someone who came with the elder drum banger, um, and she swears at the kids, because they're just standing there, and that one kid, Nick Sandman, is just standing there smiling. Uh, and then this woman who came with the elder swears at them. You'll hear the swear. Uh, and they don't swear back. They don't take the bait. Just, just watch a bit. I just want to show you this. I don't know what's going on. You guys are acting like a mob. That's what's going on. Fucking mob mentality. It's awesome because you guys are what? Like 16? How old are you? In Um, so all that's happening is that he's drumming, they're sort of chanting a bit, uh, and that one kid was dancing a bit. Um, and, I, and I say the woman with the nose ring, she's so obviously stylistically, aesthetically different from these teenage boys. She was a grown-up, she swore at them, she called them a mob. Yeah, I, I don't know there's a mob, and uh, as is evident to you right now, that drummer could have left any time. Um, 
I don't know if you saw when I ended the screen, there was a, a white leftist photographer who came with Nathan Phillips, the elder, and the photographer was about to take a shot, and there was sort of that team, right, the, the nose ring woman. Um, and I just remember what Nathan Phillips, the elder, said. He, he said that, uh, remember that first video that Alyssa Milano put up? He said they called for the wall. He said that. He said he was scared. He said that to the Washington Post. He said they taunted him. He said, he said they trapped him. His way was blocked. He said it was about to get dangerous. Is that really what happened? Okay, now watch this tape to the end from where the white photographer who came with Nathan Phillips took the photo to the end, and then we'll freeze it there. Take a look. Oh, See that? Look at that. You see that big bright light there? That's a professional camera light. There's other professional cameras, there's little cell phones, but there was a team of cameramen there. So this whole video, this whole news story was not some organic moment. It was a setup. This was a made-for-TV moment. Oh, and Nathan Phillips, uh, he seems to do this a lot. He seems to have a lot of planned meetups with kids and then accuses them of racism. Here's a story about him last year uh, in Michigan. It gets around a bit. Now the media narrative uh, over the weekend was that Nathan Phillips is a Vietnam veteran. Oh my God, that's just the icing on the cake. Now I don't know, maybe he is, but I'm not sure. You, I read to you that he's 64 years old. I'm not an expert in the Vietnam War, but I know when it ended. And I, I think he's too young to be a Vietnam but I think he was born one year too young, one year too late to be conscripted, to be conscripted in a Vietnam. By that point, they were wrapping it up. They, they stopped conscription. I guess he could have volunteered in the war's final year, maybe when he was a 17-year-old. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, though, if he ever actually says he's a Vietnam War veteran, as in someone who used to serve. Here's how he phrased it when he spoke to Vogue magazine. When he was up in North Dakota, doing his same shtick, protesting an oil pipeline last year. He said, you know, I'm from Vietnam times. I'm what they call a recon ranger. I'm from Vietnam times. What does that mean? He says that phrase from time to time. He doesn't say Vietnam veteran. That has a special meaning. He says, I'm a Vietnam era veteran. So you're a veteran of the war or a veteran of the era. I don't know. I don't know if it's a lie. And I'm not really being a truther here. I'm just saying, I think this guy's a BSer. Because um, you know that part about him saying they were calling for a wall. Well, you said that, you saw that's not true. They were cheering and hooting and being very polite. And you, you saw him tell the Washington Post that he was abused. And you saw him say on his video circulated by Alyssa Milano that he was, that he was worried. And, he, and, and all these things they were saying, he couldn't get away. Well, those were all lies. Okay, now watch this two minute video. It's a little grainier and it's a little rougher and they're swearing it. There's racial swearing, there's racist swearing here. It's not from these kids is from another group allied with Nathan Phillips, the elder. It's a group of black extremists who call, them, call themselves black Israelites. They're not Jews, though. They're something, I don't know. Listen to their shocking racism against whites, against that one black student we saw dancing. I think they say something out about a wall. Okay, now I, I, I'm gonna roll two minutes here because I want to show you what happened. This happened right before Nathan Phillips went up to the white kids that he called racist. This is two minutes, lots of swearing, and you'll notice this was before the drumming. Take a look.
Thank God, I'm warning you, nigga. I'm warning you, nigga. That's right, I'm not. I'm not. Shut your big ass up. Speak like that to your parents. All parents are dead. Well, then speak like that to them. Let me ask you something. Let me, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something, Carl. Why you ain't, you got all these dirty ass crackers behind you with a red, with a red Make America Great hat again on, and your coon ass, you want to fight your brother. You got all these racist bastards with red, you nigga, you nigga, with all these crackers with, with racist ass. Make America great hats on, and you gonna talk about you gonna get violent with us. Get your, get your old Uncle Tom ass out of here. Get your Uncle Tom ass out of here. Get your your Super Sambo ass out of here. Super Steven ass nigga, man. Leave him alone, brother. He, he, he trying to make a show now. You got your five minutes of fame. Look at all these damn Peckerwoods. This is what the Lord is coming for. All these Peckerwoods with America, make America great. This nigga want to talk that garbage about nigga what you want to do. Look at all these dusty ass crackers with that racist garbage on. Look at these dirty ass crackers. Can't stand in the damn sun for five minutes. Why you don't build the damn wall? Can't stand in the damn sun. Let me ask y'all something. Y'all want to build the wall for Mexico? When's the last time you ever seen a Mexican, a Hispanic, a Native American, or a Negro shoot up a school? Yeah, crickets. 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 That's right. Look at their ass. They ass scattered off of that one. They ass scattered off of that one. Yeah. They look like they're about to shoot. Look at their ass, Israel. They ass gone off of that. Look at that mob of these dirty animals. They gone. That's how you dismiss them. That's right. The truth gonna be told whether y'all want to hear it or not. So you've got a group of mainly white teenagers just standing there, and they're kids. I'll, I'll get back to what they were doing there in a moment. But they were being sworn at abusively by black activists, calling themselves black Israel, black Israelites. All that swearing, the use of the N-word and other racial swears against whites, was by a black activist. So he was directing that vitriol at the one black kid who you saw later on dancing. So that horrendous vomit of verbal assault is what was right before Nathan Phillips, the Vietnam era hero, the veteran saint and truth teller. And he walks up to them in the middle of this rant. And I'm gonna play this clip. So first was that anti-white, anti-black racism, then Nathan Phillip walks up and we ended with the drumming, so we actually showed you things out of order. Here is Nathan Phillips walking up to the white kids after the white kids had been abused by those black protesters. Take a look. See how much they respect you, Israel? Look at all of them, all these Americans. Go ahead, what you say? That's right, here come Gan. Here come Gan. Here come Gan. Look, look at our Make America Great Again hats. Look at the hats. Look at the hats. We ain't taking. Look, we not taking. Look at Gan. That's right, Gan. Look at Gan. Gad not playing, he came to the rescue. Our elder right there, look at him. Yeah, y'all better not touch him. Y'all better not touch him. Hey, 
now they're going to join in, huh? Gag, gag, put his, put that yeah. thing down, don't yeah, it? Yeah, gag, gag, did he calm all these spirits yeah, right yeah, down, yeah, huh? Yeah, serious with it, ain't yeah, it? Yeah, serious with it. He calm all these spirits right <laughs> down. It's spiritual right there. He calm all these spirits down. That's right. All, all these spirits is getting demonic. He calm all that down. Say that again, King. All these spirits is getting demonic. Gag, King, calm all these spirits down. That's right. All these spirits got calmed down. And Gag stepped in front of us, too, huh? Look how they mock it. Serious mockery. Would they let make America great again hat? Serious mockery. Look at that. Hmm. See, I, I thought they swarmed him. That's what he said. That's what the Washington Post said. That's what the New York Times said. That's what CNN said. I, I thought they taunted him. I thought they goaded him. I thought they attacked him. I thought they wouldn't let him go. I thought they were racist. I thought they shouted about the wall. Um, the weird comments in fact, came from the black activists, who by the end there noted that they were singing along with him. But what if all you knew was what the CBC and CNN and Jeff Bezos's Washington Post said? Even the school denounced its own kids. I went to their website, the Covington Catholic High School, and the first thing you see is a message from the Diocese of Covington and Covington Catholic High School denouncing these kids on their own homepage condemning their own students. They use the word condemn, saying they tainted the school's reputation. Can you imagine the school doing that to their own children? Well, last night, his reputation destroyed that kid, Nick Sandman, subject to countless death threats. He and his parents issued a statement. I'm going to read more than a few words to you from it because it it explains everything, all the different things we've seen. Ready? He said, I am providing this factual account of what happened on Friday afternoon at the Lincoln Memorial to correct misinformation and outright lies being spread about my family and me. I am the student in the video who was confronted by the Native American protester. I arrived at the Lincoln Memorial at 4.30 p.m. I was told to be there by 5.30 p.m. when our buses were due to leave Washington for the trip back to Kentucky. We had been attending the March for Life rally and then had split up into small groups to do sightseeing. When we arrived, we noticed four African-American protesters who were also on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. I am not sure what they were protesting and I did not interact with them. I did hear them direct derogatory insults at our school group. The protesters said hateful things. They called us racists, bigots, white crackers, faggots, and incest kids. They also taunted an African-American student from my school by telling him that we would harvest his organs. I have no idea what that insult means, but it was startling to hear. Because we were being loudly attacked and taunted in public, a student in our group asked one of our teacher chaperones for permission to begin our school spirit chants to counter the hateful things that were being shouted at our group. The chants are commonly used at sporting events. They are all positive in nature and sound like what you would hear at any high school. Our chaperone gave us permission to use our school chants. We would not have done that without obtaining permission from the adults in charge of our group. At no time did I hear any student chant anything other than the school spirit chants. I did not witness or hear any students chant build the wall or anything hateful or racist at any time. Assertions to the contrary are simply false. Our chants were loud because we wanted to drown out the hateful comments that were being shouted at us by the protesters. After a few minutes of chanting, the Native American protesters, who I hadn't previously noticed, approached our group. The Native American protesters had drums and were accompanied by at least one person with a camera. The protester everyone had seen in the video began playing his drum as he waded into the crowd, which parted for him. I did not see anyone try to block his path. He locked eyes with me and approached me, coming within inches of my face. He played his drum the entire time he was in my face. I never interacted with this protester. I did not speak to him. I did not make any hand gestures or other aggressive moves. To be honest, I was startled and confused as to why he had approached me. We had already been yelled at by another group of protesters, and when the second group approached, I was worried that a situation was getting out of control, where adults were attempting to provoke teenagers. I believed that by remaining motionless and calm, I was helping to diffuse the situation. I realized everyone had cameras, and that perhaps a group of adults was trying to provoke a group of teenagers into a larger conflict. I said a silent prayer that the situation would not get out of hand. It goes on and on, so many details. 
And you saw the corroborating video for all of it, didn't you? What do you think happened here? Do you think that silent kid was racist? Do you think he was smirking racistly? Do you think he was taunting the man with the drum, threatening him? Do you think these kids did anything more than be a bit boisterous? Would you have been so calm in the face of racial slurs being thrown at you by the black extremists, even against a fellow African-American? Would you have been so calm if someone walked up to you within an inch of your face and banged a drum in your face for five minutes? I would not have been so calm, smiling and praying. You know, this is a version of what they did to Brett Kavanaugh. This is, a, this is what they did to an anonymous kid from Kentucky. This is what they'll do to you. And by they, I don't just mean the lying thugs at the Lincoln Memorial. I mean the lying thugs in the mainstream media, including the lying thugs in our own Canadian media, including and especially at the CBC. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a video monologue and then I interview an interesting guest and then I end by reading my hate mail, but you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.